Lydia Gayler Tejada was born on August 28, 1921, in Cochabamba, Bolivia. She is recognized for being the first woman ever to accept the charge of presidency in Bolivia and was the second female to hold a position that high in the Western Hemisphere. In 1948, she joined the Movimiento Nacionalista Revolucionario, where she took a political role and stood out as a feminist leader for the youth. Three years later, accompanied by 26 other women, she led a hunger strike for eight days at the Palacio de Justicia de la Paz to demand the liberation of leftist political prisoners. These women also fought for non-aggression and the revocation of Victor Paz Estensoro, who had won the election. In 1952, she was an active participant to remove Bolivia's military leadership before the military put an end to the MNR-led government, and she was imprisoned and forced to exile. When Gayler returned to Bolivia after 15 years of exile, she was elected in 1979 as a president of the Chamber of Deputies. The years preceding Gayler's presidency were tumultuous to say the least. Scholar Stefan Zunz chronicled the five years of civil unrest before true democracy was restored to Bolivia in his article, The Role of Civil Resistance in Bolivia's 1977-1982 Pro-Democracy Struggle. Plagued by a tenure resulting in a work strike, a mass hunger strike, illegal repression, and political motivated arrest, dictator Hugo Banzer was forced into stepping down. After a fraudulent presidential election in 1978, tension and protest grew again, exacerbated when General Alberto Natush Bush assumed the presidency in a bloody fashion, resulting in more deaths in his first two weeks as president than seven years of Banzer's regime. As his military began to destabilize under the wells of protest, he was also forced to resign only 16 days after he took office. The reestablished Congress elected Gay Lair, who was then serving as the president of chamber deputies, as interim president. As historian Charles W. Arney notes in his article, The Bolivian Presidents, a Matter of Record, with the legal and democratic nature of her accession, she became the first elected woman president in Latin America. As Isabel Perón, was not elected, but instead appointed by her husband. Eler Tejada was soon the subject of harassment and intimidation by her cousin, Juan Garcia Mesa, who, with his influence of the Bolivian army, secretly executed bombings and assassinations to cast doubt on Gailer's ability to lead, allowing the army to pressure her into giving Mesa the position of commander-in-chief of the army. With this new power, Mesa arrested Gailer, demanded her resignation, and forced her to flee Bolivia in exile. Despite her political end in Bolivia, Lidia Gailer Tejada continued to champion against the injustice of political abuse, as she always had. In a New York Times article released the weekend of her installation as president, written by Warren Hoge, Gailer described to him the commotion that had occurred after her election, in which a mob of people were threatening to invade the presidential office to remove the remaining officers from Bush's regime. Gailer said, Because of my experience in revolutionary moments, it didn't scare me as much as it did them, and I decided to go outside. This fearlessness boded well when she spent time in Chile after her first military exile, where she helped Bolivians expatriate during the years of René Barrientos' regime. Before her exile, she represented Bolivian women at the Comisión Interamérica de Mujeres, and she authored several laws to help Bolivian women gain their rights. Because of this, she received multiple awards for her work, such as Bolivia's highest decoration, Condor de los Andres Gran Cruz, and the UN Women of the Year Award in 1979. After Mesa's dictatorship fell, she served as ambassador to Bolivia, to various countries such as Colombia, West Germany, and Venezuela. Lidia Galer Tejada may not have been in power for long, but the impact she had on women in Bolivia and in Latin America is felt today as more and more women claim positions of powers in countries all over the globe.